the new days good vibes on my youtube dark days never stay like a noon day here to shine light to the people power of three miss clovanova miss mrs coco mrs. mr coco. tony og tony it's OG. the midday monday lunch break hour, hour for, for me clovanova no yeah mondays at noon clovanova no subscribe to the show clovanova no mondays at noon central clovanova no Subscribe and tune in to the show. Let's talk about it. Who's on the line? Let's talk about it. What's on your mind? Let's talk about hey, it. Hey, Charms, you are now Let's tuned in it. to Clover Nova No. Now, if you're new Let's here, go ahead hit that subscribe button. And if you're returning, welcome, welcome back to K N N. Hello, you guys. Welcome back to another episode of Clover Nova Notes, the imperfectly imperfect. The Imperfectly Perfect Show. I am your host, Ms. Clovanova. I am joined today with my lovely co-host, Mr. Tony OG. Mrs. Coco has, um, is sitting this one out because of her, um, if you guys are in Chicago, you guys know that we had a big storm um, last night. She's without power today. Um, but she is she'll healthy. She's, she's safe. Everybody in the family is safe right now. Everybody's great. Yeah. But yeah, she ain't got no electricity, y'all. No electricity. No, no electric. No, no electric. No uh, <laughs> she ain't got no lights um, in it. <laughs> it's like the end of the, the month the, kind of situation, you know, when it happens sometimes. You scrape from the coins and you just, right, I'm going to get through three more days, you know? So, but, but, yeah. And the reason I was laughing when I first came on the show is because we just found this out. So, this is yes. like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> Um, and I had all kind of thoughts of postponing the show, and I was like, well, Antonio was like, um, again, no, we're going to do the show. So I am floating right now, you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little, feeling a little, um, I don't know, thrown for a little. Liberated. Yeah. Feeling but, liberated. You know, they had no liquor. Who does that? Okay. <laughs> Who has that feeling? Because I want it. I would like to have it. I mean, can I get I a little? I don't know where it comes from, but I hope it's a good thing. <laughs> We're going to find out. Um, it's that adrenaline. Really, really, really. It's that adrenaline. Really, really, really. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, how was your your week, Tonio? How, um, let's talk about well, it. Yeah, these past couple of weeks have been great. They've been pretty cool. We had, um, let's see here. This is February, so we have a lot of great things going on, y'all. As y'all know, it's Black History. Oh, we've been going Black History Month. So, yes, power to the peeps, right? So, we've been doing our thing. Um, I had an opportunity to speak at a couple of events. Let's talk about um, that. What yeah. events are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. So, I had one for work um, where um, they reached out. And they wanted me to speak about just black um, in corporate America and just how we have transitioned, how we've um, really walked into that space. And so I got an opportunity to do that. Um, so that was really good. We had about five, a little bit over 500 people um, viewership for the organization that did that. So that was really cool. It was myself and another person on the panel and um, just knocked it out of the park. Really great experience. Uh, awesome opportunity. And then a second um, was an opportunity for, um, I do a lot of philanthropy work here within um, San Antonio where I is and um, out here in the communities. So um, in, the where? in the communities, the communities. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. we don't go with that yeah. Community. Yeah. yeah. The communities. Now, <laughs> all the communities are great people, great times. And it was very, very lovely. Uh, this past weekend, we had um, our first um, M on the board of directors for our LGBTQ Chamber of Commerce here in San Antonio, Texas. So as a board director member, we had our first um, event for this year. 
and I was point on that one. So it set it up. We had a great turnout, um, over almost 200 people, excuse me, over 150 people in attendance, uh, which is like insane, especially for our first event post pandemic. We just really just put our, put our foot out network, network, marketing, marketing. So it was really good. A lot of good individuals come in for that networking meeting and networking event. Um, and then we had a um, Saturday, I think it was that, yeah, it was Saturday, I went to our council member for our district. He had his um, fundraising event slash birthday party. So it That's was it, it was everything. It was everything. He is I'm a part of the LGBT community and um, the first of color to be in that position. So we okay. had to rep. Yes, yeah, so it was on par. We had it at the um, one of the eldest um, LGBT clubs, gay clubs here in San Antonio, Texas, called the Bonham Exchange. So shout out to the Bonham Exchange. If you're here in San Antonio, go visit it. They all everything. So uh, we had the event there. It was really, really nice. A lot of great people. We got to raise money for his um, re-election campaign. So being a part of that is just it was it's just a lot. It was very exciting. So those was a big like summation of my last couple of weeks. Oh, and then I had to go out and go and see Mr. Jonathan Majors himself at, on uh, the quant ant man in the quantum realm. So if you haven't seen Quantum Manium, they can get on out and go and see Jonathan Majors. I mean, we'll see uh Ant Man. I mean, yeah, Ant Man. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's also just Jonathan Hages. I love me some Jonathan Hages. Because the heart of the fall is just. But you had a very eventful. Um, this past couple of weeks been crazy. Past couple of weeks been that. Yes. Congratulations for speaking in front of 500 people because I know I would be frightened. Um, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm barely be knowing what to say on this show and I'm just talking mm -hmm. to out. But. Um, yeah, that was what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. Way to, way to like really um, dive into Black History Month um, with some good topics. Um, my, how about yourself? What did you do, honey? What did you do? I, okay, so every, you know my 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 week my days are not as eventful. Um, appointments here and and taking care of mom is my number one priority. And she's doing um, a lot better than she was doing before the first week. Well, last week, um, she was given um, a different insulin. They didn't agree with her. So she was very weak. Um, mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know if I should even say what brand of insulin it was, but her doctor switched her insulin and um, it didn't agree with her. So we put her back on the insulin. Now she's better. So that's the, that's the main Good. important part. She's better. She's up. Mm -hmm. She's, you know, moving around and, um, yeah, she's still, you know, back to, uh, back to herself. Um, and I'm grateful for that. Cause I was scared a little minute for her. Yeah. Um, other than that, what else did I do? We talk, well, well, before you go back on back to my TT, y'all. I mean, that's my auntie, y'all. So y'all didn't know, y'all. Y'all know. But going back Shout to out my mom. Oh, Hi, mom. I know. Hey, TT. <laughs> Miss Cheekbones. Clover, get her honest, y'all. She gets them honest. Yeah, so <laughs> my cheekbones, my daddy eyes. That's on that. fleek, let me tell you. Um, y'all still say fleek? I think I still say fleek. I don't know, but okay. Uh, do do I, they? <laughs> I don't know what the young people are doing nowadays. Let me tell you. But uh, talk about this nine-hour appointment, girl. Please tell the people about how our health systems need to really improve because that is crazy. Um, our nine-hour appointments. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so she had uh, which appointment? Because I don't even know which one you're talking about. The eye, the eye doctor appointment. The, okay, so she had an appointment her mm. <laughs> to get her eyes checked. Um, we were there. I think we had an appointment at one o'clock. I think um, we got there a little early because we already know we're going to be sitting there for a while. Then I have to give her time to go to the bathroom, all that stuff. We literally didn't get seen till like maybe three, and then. They saw her, did her vitals, and then we had to wait another hour till the doctor came in about four. 
And then we didn't get out of there to like five. So it was like, it was very extensive just for her to get, you know, an okay to get a prescription for some glasses. He booked 61 patients in that one day and all the nurses were complaining and there was, you know, they was like, well, it's going to be a little while because he's, you know, on Saturdays, he overbooks. And so, yeah, so I, my, that was my time, you guys, and, and eye doctors. And, and, and um, yesterday we did her uh, MRI. So that was fast. So eye appointment took longer than her getting the MRI. Yeah, like I said, not very eventful, but I did. That is eventful. <laughs> that is the whole event, no, they don't. I was trying to, as you see, I was trying to blur it out of my memory until you brought it back up. Like, what's your name uh, again? Because I was like, it's a several. You know, need so. to be told. People need to know. The people need to know. Yeah. So everyone, please send your prayers and just you know send your prayers to mom. The prayer's been working for mom to get better. Mm. She's a strong woman, so she gets up and she does what she needs to do, but. You know, medication switching and stuff is not always good for her. And uh, I'm just glad she's back on her feet. Yes. And, uh, walking around, laughing and stuff. It's always good to see her in good spirits. Doing yeah. her thing. Other than that, I've just been trying to research Black, um, like we're talking about Black contributions to Black culture. Uh, I've been doing that. I don't say I've been doing it. We're going to say I took one day to do it. This is why I'm uh, <laughs> feeling a little ill prepared. But we, look, the show's gonna go on. Listen, ill prepared, girl. No ill prepared. We good. We got this, y'all. Yeah. She okay. ready. <laughs> she ready. <laughs> so wait, let me just take the time out to say thank you guys for rocking with us, even though we postponed the show. You guys, uh, oh, yeah. for the ones that are still subscribed to us and, and tuning in, whether you tune in live or you tune in after the live, we appreciate you guys for rocking with us. And we hope that you guys continue to watch the episodes, to share the episodes, to comment, you know, to give us some kind of love and feedback. Because, you know, ultimately, we want to know what you guys want to talk about. Um, and we know that's going to take, you know, a little while because we're you know, we're we're taking off and um trying to, you know, build the show up as we go. Um, rather than being trying to be polished first. We're just, you know, knocking out the kinks as we go. So thank you guys for rocking with us. Um shout out to Mrs. Coco. Um we mm -hmm. hope to see her next week. Come in. Come on, baby. Mm -hmm. get, get, the power. Power. get it. Come on out. Come on out, come in. Um so yeah, today we are talking about Black contributions to Black culture, where we are discussing um, people you may not have known invented stuff. You know, mm -hmm. we're not talking about um, the, the 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 obvious stuff like the, the peanut. We we don't talk about all of that. We're talking about inventors that um, we still use their devices today, but we want to go back into where did it come from, right? Mm -hmm. um, we do know in our history that sometimes other cultures have tried to erase the fact that we were the, uh, the uh, what do you call it? What's the word I'm looking for, Tonio? We're looking for that we, we were the pioneers, okay? Pioneer. We Thank you. were those individuals. Exactly. See? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just going to start it off with uh, Let's go. My first one. Okay, so. Everyone loves cars, right? I would, I would like. I think so. To think that everyone loves driving a car rather than taking public transportation. Um, so I um, researched Richard Bowie Spikes. Mm -hmm. um, he invented the automatic gear shifter. Um, mm -hmm. As I'm trying to coordinate. Okay, so here's a picture of. Um, Richard about Bowie Spikes as I read off some of his um, accolades. His accolades. Okay, so he received a patent for his automatic gear shifter in 1932. My grandma wasn't even born in 1932. Um, then he focused his energy on improving the automatic braking system until 1962. My mom was like one years old. Um, <laughs> uh, he holds several American patents, including the beer tap, 
So uh, that's where I come from. With your boy Spice, when y'all go to the club and y'all ask for beer, I don't know if they still do beer taps or yeah. not. Oh, they do? Okay. Yeah. He, uh, he invented the beer tap, the billard Q rack. If y'all play pool, just give a shout out to Richard Bowie Spikes because he invented the little rack um, and vehicle turn signals. So, you know, those of y'all who don't use signals out there, Richard would be very upset. <laughs> use your turn signals, guys, when you turn in lanes, okay? Uh, we can go back and forth. Tony, do you have one? Or do you have, see, I don't know. Yeah. That would help. You said what? Can you do? I never know with you because you come. Oh. You, you, what is that? Is she tried to come for me? I think y'all. No, to me. that was a compliment. I never know. <clears throat> it was something spectacular. So I feel some type of way. I don't know how to feel about this. Okay, well, yeah, I guess just, I can just, go ahead and just watch the screens move to the side, and then he just takes up. <laughs> I, mean, I think something like that. <laughs> Wait, is that gonna happen? It is, but yeah. that's not the point. No. <laughs> you got to teach me how to do that. I got you. I feel, I I feel amateur. Okay. I feel amateur. It's okay. Oh, wait a minute. Before you do that, I left out some things while you get that set up. Um, he also had mm -hmm. eight patents to his name awarded between 1907 and 1946. Um, and they said Emil Levasseur and Louis Rene Panhard are, create, uh, are credited for developing the first manual transmission um, in 1894. I'm not mm. sure why that, I put that 18, I think it's 19, no, it can't be 1994, I put 1894. Y'all do y'all research, I didn't do enough, but I did put on that Emil Lavasser and Louis Rene Panhard. So he did the automatic shifter and they created the manual shift. I don't know how to drive. You know how to drive manual? I do. That was my very first car was a manual. It was a really? 19, mm -hmm, it was a 1983 Ford Escort GT. I tried. Yep. I don't like the manual. I, I, that was not by choice. Please let, let, let me go back. That was not by choice. What had happened was um, I was supposed to get a vehicle gave my percentage of said vehicle. And I came home and this vehicle was sitting in front of the house. And I was so excited. I ran to it. I was like, I'm going to go drive to school the next day. And then I was told I couldn't. I was like, well, why not? I pay for this vehicle. I don't know why I can't. I can't. Well, come to find out that the vehicle was a shift. It was a, uh, and a manual. And I knew nothing about how to drive one. So I had to learn. So the vehicle stood outside of my home for quite some time. The other people drove it. <laughs> that lived in my house. Like, so, before they taught you how to drive it, they, they drive it around. You know what I mean? So I been like, nobody's driving my stuff until I yeah. learn how to drive. You know, but eventually I learned that it did. You know, I ended up getting in a car with some cousins that taught me, and then I had a, we had another cousin that just got out of, and they taught me how to drive it. You know, with the lead, and uh, so we were able to do that. So that was great. That was great. But yeah, and then in the military, all of the vehicles, well, not all, let me not say that. We have some automatics, but a lot of them are manual too. I tried to drive a, a manual and I think I almost <laughs> did make it. Messed up the car. <laughs> I just heard a loud <laughs> screeching, like it felt like metal on metal was rubbing together, and I was yeah. just like, oh my God. Yeah, that's and the thing. Yeah, so uh, automatic. Thank you, Richard Bowie Spikes, for the automatic. <laughs> um, Emil and Louis Renee. Why? I don't. I don't get it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. That was you were saying. You were saying. Mm -hmm. go ahead, finish. Huh? I said finish what you were saying. No, those are the last two on 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 him that I had. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Calculate, yeah. Okay, well, let me go ahead here and share it in my screens. I go here. I need to go here. So you guys who are, who are watching right now, um, in the comments, we want to see who you guys picked as your Black contributor, contributors um, to society. People who invented stuff that they don't talk about much in history class. So uh, we're interested in seeing what you guys come up with or somebody that invented something recently. You know, as long as they're black and they're inventors, that's history being made. So, 
Right. I'm looking forward to reading those and sharing those um, next week. You know, when you guys put it in, in the comments. So, can't be one hour. Right. I got to pick some other ones. So, right. let's see. I hear the rest of Oz. And then, if y'all got somebody, please let us know. Mm hmm. Okay, so what I have for you today. Oh, wait a minute, I pushed the wrong button. See, okay, it. Oh, there it is. Open the right folder now. Open the right <laughs> folder. <laughs> Don't open the wrong folder now. It's gonna on. be the right one, George. I'm gonna do it, Joe. <laughs> Don't do it, Please don't do it, Joe. <laughs> All right, people. All right, so this would be, hey, y'all, hey, what's Ooh. going on? All right, so this would be our first person that we're going to talk about today. This is Mr. Garrett Morgan. Okay, and if y'all know who Mr. Garrett Morgan is, Mr. Garrett Morgan was the man who invented the traffic light signal, y'all. So. Okay. It goes right on in, in, in par, right on in par with what Miss Clover Nova was talking about, those turning signals in the core. So yeah. Gary Morgan was like, hey, you know, that's great. Y'all know how to move from lane to lane and turn, but let me help you out when it comes to getting to the streets so y'all ain't having all these accidents. Because before, <laughs> there used to be manual, and it only goes went two ways. But he invented, so there's a four-stop. So this yeah. is how we have the four stops going today. In addition to that, he created gas masks as well. So, and this is just a little bit about him himself, you know. So he was 46, he was 46 years old inventor. He started as a newspaper man. Um, and for his first three position, he was, you know, again, that first three position uh, traffic light. Um, you know, he's a black man because he said it, the lights is red, yellow, and green. So, it's, you know. Right. You know, come on. So <laughs> then it says, uh, it, was an event, it was an important innovate, um, intervention. Um, and before, because again, it was just stop and go. So he made sure we made those changes. Mm. So, um, so that really helped us out tremendously in moving forward. Another good thing about it, Morgan's invention was born out of tragedy. Okay, and mm. this was um, see a a fire invoked in New York, and this was doing a triangle shift waste company on okay. uh, March the twenty fifth of nineteen eleven, killing one hundred and forty six of mm. uh, garment workers and most of them were young female or immigrants who were locked into a factory uh the incident put the inadequ inadequacies of fire codes and safety equipment on national display so morgan um, had itself once again an opportunity to find a garment that would work so he attacked a problem and had a systematic invention for years for like smoke inhalations and things like that so what he did was with that he created the first gas mask and with that gas mask came and it later was adopted by the military and transmitted and worked out to move other things so everybody give great shout out to mr gary morgan he's yes. the reason why you know we got our gas mask you know any type of chemical agent issue or whatever this is the man who started that this is the man that's keeping us safe while we on the streets and driving and we're not crashing so Shout out to Mr. Garrett Morgan. Yes, bo Garrett. Bo 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 you know, and I also love, I also <laughs> love his popcorn. Yes, Garrett's popcorn is is this just <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, it, Garrett's I don't know if it's the same Garrett, but hey, you know, <laughs> Garrett's popcorn is this year. <laughs> what you got, Miss Clover? I have coming up um, this guy, George T. T Sampson. George T. Sampson invented the what back then they were called it the letterbox that we yeah. now call the mailbox. And he also invented the uh the dryer, the first gas uh automatic dryer. Mm -hmm. Um so here's a picture of the mailbox that we use today. As you see, the patents for the dryer is right there. Mm -hmm. Um so in, 19, in 1892, Samson developed the first automatic clothes dryer that used a series of suspension rods. I guess those are the suspension rods mm -hmm. uh, there. Um, his design was used up until 1930 um, when the use of gas and electric dryers began. Prior to his invention, clothes were hung up on the top of an open flame. So y'all know, back then, the clothes just smelled like gas and, and, and fuel and stuff, so and smoke. 
So that's this is what inspired him to invent an automatic um, dryer. Um, and it was used until the growth of the gas and electric dryers in the late 1930s and early 1940s. Um, he also invented and patented the, a shed propeller in 1885 back then. So shout out to um, Mr. George T. Sampson. And I want to read this too. He invented the street letter box, which is known today as the mailbox. Downing design an apparatus that would allow people to securely place outgoing letters in a protected community postal box centrally located in the neighborhood. And he designed it so that it would also um, protect the letters from all kind of weather types. So snow, rain, all that stuff didn't affect your letters. So this is how you guys can get your letters sent now because you used to have to walk to the post office and mail letters back in the day. So shout out to George T. Sampson for doing that. And our clothes don't smell like smoke. And our letters can get to Springfield. Our W-2s and taxes and stuff. Shout out to the tax and the, the IRS for giving me my, my $6 this year. <laughs> so you just take the wheel. Yeah. You just take the yeah, wheel. Antonio. Have mercy. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> Just I'm just saying. Lord have mercy. Jesus take the wheel. Okay. Okay. Let's see who we got here next. Who we got next here is next. What we got here is Miss Lena Richard, y'all. Hey, hey. Lena. that's my grandma name, Lena Rich. I know. Hey, Miss Lena. She invented the first cooking show. The woman. Not she, Miss Julia Charles. Not, not Miss Julia Chews. No. <laughs> no, ma'am. No, sir. It was Miss Lena Richard. Okay. So let's get it right. So Miss Lena Richard in 1949, <laughs> nearly a year after New Orleans, um, she went live for the first time. Okay. So okay. Ms. Lena Richards, an African-American Creole chef and entrepreneur, brought her freshly prepared dishes to family-style kitchen TV set and took to the screen to film her self-titled cooking show, the first of its kind of any African-American or person. Okay, mm. Her reputation was very fine, says Ms. Rhodes, okay, Richards' daughter. She was a sous chef, okay? Okay. Everybody used to call her Mama Lena. Ain't that what we do as black folks? We always call Mama Mama. Everybody is Mama, okay? Mm -hmm. don't, it don't matter. It's just a sign of just endearment and respect that I think we have in our culture that is so rich and specific. Mm -hmm. what, what, do you, what do you think about that, Miss Clover? I think that that's an ode to my grandma because my grandma name was Lena and uh, we called her Grandma Lena. And mm -hmm. uh, she invented mm -hmm. the best chili on earth. Um, I took the recipe with her. Um, I'm trying to get it, Grandma. I'm trying to make my chili like yours. But I wish I'd get that recipe because my grandma made some good chili. So shout out to all the Lenas out there in the world. Um, mm -hmm. I wonder if she's a Capricorn or not. Okay, okay. So how about um, as far as our culture goes and, and calling, you know, those women in our culture mama? Um. Uh, a cook, Mrs. Coco says she looks like she can cook, cook. Yes, she does. Mm -hmm. Yes, she yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. She um, okay, calling okay. our mama, mama. I think it was a, it was a, a, a sign of respect, first of all, because I think back right. then, um, like we, um, like we knew as, as children. I don't know about this new generation, but when I was young, um, when you go outside, your mom wasn't out there. If somebody mama was out there, that's your mama, and you give that's it, the same, it. You give it the same respect that you give. Yeah, um, you know, your mom. So calling yeah. someone mom is like, yes, ma'am, and, and no ma'am today and whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's sad that, you know, we've lost that a, a little bit in our culture, um, the respect for older elders and people that are contributing to black culture. So That's let's true. get that back, y'all. Let's get that back. Let's get the big mamas back. That's even right. Though little, even though they're a little younger than the big mamas back in the day. But, you know, the, the, yeah. the point I'm trying to make is, you know, show your elders some respect. They, they that's right. Like, paved the way for us to have the freedoms that we have right now. So that's right. 
That's right. I mean, it, as that's so on point and so true, you know, and and same difference here, right? Everybody was Big Mama. Everybody was Mama. So a little bit more about Lena here, like the show titled Lena Riches in New Orleans Cookbook mm-hmm. and was one of the earliest offerings of this on the station and became so popular that WDSU TV began airing her show twice weekly on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. While the program welcomed a, a, a racially mixed audience, the majority were middle, white, and upper class white women who learned on Rich's culinary expertise for all things Creole. Again, mm. talking about appropriation, talking about, hey, you don't know how to make this some seasoning flavor, okay? This is where you get it from, okay? okay. So um, one of um, the you know what I'm saying? A great historian from the Smithsonian uh, National Museum. She did some history on Richards, and she said Richards' ability to share her recipes on TV in her own words and as the star of her own program was an important and fairly exceptional departure within the media culture at the time. Because everything else we were talking about during the time, again, we talked about the early 1900s, was about the wars that were going on, yeah. about, you know, uh, poverty. So having that escapism to talk about actual food and, and, and how to cook correctly and, and what makes things work was mm-hmm. a great departure from that. Last but not least, Mama Lena was the Mother Stewart of New Orleans, okay? A trained yeah. chef, acclaimed cookbook author, restaurant and catering business owner, frozen food entrepreneur, TV host, and cooking school teacher. Okay? <laughs> so let's go and say it, but nowadays them folks is watching chicken with Don. <laughs> well, yeah, honey, that's a whole nother thing. It's a whole nother thing. Um, just going back to Miss Lena real quick. Okay, so um, she um said definitely a respect thing. It took a village, so out of respect, we could we call them. Yeah, it took a village. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. It took a village to raise the kids, so everybody was mom, and it was a community thing. It was like you know, moms had to work, so we trusted the neighbor to look out for our children and playing in the streets and all that. So it was mama. Uh, I was actually watching. Uh, I remember watching Temptations with my mama, and uh, when you know when what's his name when Otis met uh, Melvin's mom, she said everybody call me Mama Rose, so you call me Mama Rose too. So it was just like she's like, come on in here and get something to eat. You know that's what that's what reminded me of that when you said Mama, Mama Lena. So that was definitely a thing back in the day. Hmm. Okay, all right. I'll let you go ahead. Next, what do you have? Okay, so I... <laughs> okay, so yeah, I want to backtrack what I did with the last one when I said George T. Sampson created the mailbox. It was not George T. Sampson. George T. Sampson created the, the, the dryer, but it was actually Philip B. Downing who created the mailbox. Um born in 1857 in Ontario, Canada. Um, but he moved to Boston, Massachusetts in 1934. Um, and that was a solution to people having to walk to the mailbox. Um, he created the, you know, the letterbox that we call mailbox. So sorry, y'all, I mixed two in one. That was my second one, my third one. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we were looking forward to you guys. Um, if you guys have some, you have some more, Antonio? I do Black. have another one. Mm-hmm. Okay, keep, let's keep them going. Wait, before you do that, though. Yeah, so let's go, let's go, let's keep them going. E, 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 e. Y'all know I'm a good, you know, I love my snack now. I got my snack. Yeah, I got my Pringles today. So somebody's 
There's a motion detected at my front door, according to this computer back here telling me. But yeah. Okay. So if y'all hear that, that's where that come from. All righty, let's see here. The next person we have today. I had to veer off a little bit from inventions, but this person is still a great event. They, they, they're great, they did some great contributions to our culture, us as people. Okay. So this person right here is Mr. Ernie Barnes. He's a legendary artist, athlete, and actor. And that's don't a know. conversation. I mean, our usual, unusual um, combo. Combo, yeah. Artist, mm -hmm. athlete, and actor. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Artist, athlete, and actor. And I want to see whether or not y'all remember this here. If y'all know anything about this picture here, when you see it. Boop. What's that picture up there? That's out right, y'all. <gasps> yes. I do remember that picture from. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So I want to pay an homage to the legendary artist, athlete, and actor Ernie Barnes. From he was okay. born in 1938, died back in 2009. But most of us know him from his iconic. That's so that that picture. If you don't know, it's called the Sugar Shack painting, as the work of art that was featured in the opening and closing credits of Norman Lear's hits 1970 sitcom. What'd you say it was? Good, Good times. times. That's right. Yeah. And it was and it was also on Marvin Gaye's album cover for 1976 release. I want you. So. Mm -hmm. Take a look at it. Here's a fun fact. If you pay close attention, you will notice that this painting was also featured in Evan's family apartment during the fifth and sixth season. So go back and look at those old episodes and you'll see this painting sitting up on the wall back in good times. It's so good. So, so good. So most may not know that Ernie played professional football too. He played professional football from 59 to 65 mm -hmm. for the teams such as the Baltimore Colts, the Titans of New York, and San Diego Chargers, and even the Denver Broncos. His okay. football career earned um, ended, excuse me, after a fracture to his left foot. During this time, that's when he started playing for um, the Rough Riders in, a, in Canada during 65. So, um, but what happened, how he ended up starting his painting or his um, artist career after a choice meeting and an unusual act from the NFL team's New York Jets owner, Sonny um, Warblin, he decided to retain Barnes as a salary player, but position him not on the field, but in front of a canvas. So during this whole time, this was the beginning of his art career. So Barnes, back in November of 66, he debuted his solo exhibit hosted by Wimbledon at the Grand Central Art Galleries in New York City and was critically acclaimed and all the paintings sold. Now, I say again, all his paintings sold. We're talking about in 66, okay, during the height of, um, uh, of all of the movements that were going on. And you had this black artist out here getting it in. So as I said earlier, you know, he 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 passed away back in on um, one Monday evening back in uh, 2009. Um, back in Los Angeles, California, where he lived at, he passed away from uh, leukemia. But, you know, he was survived by his five children and uh, his wife and she later passed. But I just wanted to make sure to say thank you, Ernie, to um, for all of his contributions to our community and yes. to his world of art. Shout out to Ernie for that. Mm -hmm. And he was a good looking man, dude. I was, you know, I was thinking it. <laughs> I was thinking it. I was trying to, you know, respect. Uh, uh, mm. Yeah, There's five respect. kids. I know that's right. <laughs> good times, honey. Good times. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so those are my three individuals that I have for today. Yes, I love it. Um, so. Yeah. Well I, well, I guess next week when Coco get on, she can still do her, her three because Black yeah. History Month ain't just uh, limited to February. We have Black History Month every day. Every day. Black, we making history, right? Every day. Every so, day. Every day. so um, if you guys have um, some, remember, if you guys have any um, contributors from Black History Month that don't get highlighted as often um, that you guys want to share, let's educate the world and share... Um, you know who you have we we're interested in seeing what you guys you know dig up in the research of black mm -hmm. culture 
That's true. That's true. Um, so shout out to all the people who invented things and um, people that are um, updating and, and, and rebranding these inventors. Make sure you guys give the proper respect for those who, and you know, um, what was the word you said again? They were pioneers. Pioneer, honey. They were pioneers. Who, who pioneered this? Okay. That's right. Let's and let's talk about it too. Let's let's, let's talk about it. Let's, let's talk about just how appropriation has really taken over. Okay. okay. When we think about it and we think about just how many moments come in to where we have um do the main job without me logging off down one percent. Uh oh, okay, Miss Coco, Shout don't get that phone on the charger. Out. Thank you, God. Thank y'all thank for tuning in with us and, and watching Mrs. Coco uh, in, in the chat. So she's at 1% now. We're, we're praying for your power to get back on. We're praying for let there be light. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we hope you're not in the dark for too long, darling. We need you back here next week. Sip. Um, it comes to light. That's right. That's right. Um, well, was about to, oh yeah, well Sam was. You know, we think when we think about just those type of things that we have created, we have developed, we continue to do when it comes to like jazz, when it comes to blues, rhythm and blues, mm -hmm. you know, hip hop. But then we see others appropriate those things and take them and then try to claim them as their own. Mm. It's like, what is really your culture? Where, where, where your culture is a melting pot? Is that what you're saying? You know, you just uh, acquire these pieces that you want and then add them to your own pot and just say, this is mine now. I mean, how does that really work? The first thing that came to mind was uh, Nicki Minaj. When she came in the game and thought that she just, you know, took a little Kim Ho style and just recreated rap and didn't give her the proper respect. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it's very important, even in music, um, when you're sampling other people's artists and music from back in the day, it's mm -hmm. important to always pay homage to those people that were pioneers and whatever, because there's nothing new under the sun. Everything we're doing now mm -hmm. is has been done, even though you changed it up and you changed the color, you, you updated it, mm -hmm. but the pioneers, mm -hmm. If it wasn't for them having that imagination to think of that, we wouldn't have it today. So I think it's all due respect for um, those who invented it and, and pioneered it. And, you know, uh, also shout out to those people who are continuing to keep that that legend going that, you know, those things. Go I'm sorry, I'll turn my value down. But, yeah, shout out to those people who are continuing to, you know, um, redevelop, rebrand, or reinvent things that are already reinvented. But don't forget about where it started. Don't forget where you came from, okay? So if you invent a new traffic light, don't forget about the pioneers, the dryers, and mailboxes, whatever. So I think it's important that we, you know, highlight that. I agree. And plus you can get sued, too. You can't just say you invented <laughs> something, and they have patents for that, so... You can't just go out there and say, oh, I invented the car. Mine is electric and it flies. You didn't invent that car. You updated it. <laughs> right. You know? Put a little something new to it. That's all that yeah. was. Yeah. Add a little, add, you know, add a new color to it. Some other craziness. But no, so I, I agree with Franklin, you. Franklly, show a little respect. Just hmm. a little bit. Just a little bit. A little hey, bit. just yeah. a little bit. Listen, I think it's so interesting when we sit back and we think about where we come from, where we are currently, how we have added so much, how much has been erased from society, what's been erased. Like we look at Corona today, they're removing Black history education from our school systems. That is ridiculous, you know, and we have to continue to teach and monitor and provide the history because if you don't, you're doing a repeat the same stupid mistakes. Yes. So it's, it's so important to continue that those conversations, continue that information. But one of my biggest things, and this is a conversation I had with a good friend of mine, was is surrounded by um, Black History Month itself as a whole. It's being the end. We got one more day, uh, which is tomorrow, of what is considered Black History Month, right? 
my whole thing when it comes to Black History Month. Me personally, and get your stones ready if you need to have them, is I don't feel that we should have a Black History Month. That's my perspective. It's my thought. I feel that Black history should be celebrated every day, not yeah. just on 28 days out of the year. We want to focus on it. It should be focused every day because Black history is American history. So it needs to be intertwined, entwined, infused, impregnated, any words you want to use, into American literature. So it's all put in there. All the stories that we're talking about during Black history, all of these prominent leaders, all of these inventors, all of these activists, these individuals that contributed to the way that we live and coexist today, all them, all their names and their information and their accolades need to be added into American history, not washed down, not, uh, um, you know, it should, everyone should know about it. And I feel that we are at, at a disservice by not doing so. Um, that's how I feel about it. Now, do I feel that we shouldn't, that we should, do I feel that we should honor specific individuals during a certain time of year? If it's an annual event, like maybe the year the invention came out or maybe the year or the, the time frame and when their um, contribution was uh, a prominent or, or laid foundation or ground to uh, our, our community. Yeah, that makes sense. That's why we have a Martin Luther King Day. Right. Great. Let's talk about Martin Luther King on this day because on his birthday or the day we celebrate is the day we remember all the things he's done. Things like that makes sense. But to say we're only going to condense Black history to these 28 days out of a year, I just don't, I don't think that's okay. I know where the history of Black history came from. I understand the, the reasoning for it. And I think that we, at this day and age, almost 100 years later, I think we've come to a point to where we can now put it all together, right? Instead of keeping right. it segregated. Because if we keep it segregated, then we won't find a way together and move forward. Right? You know what? Yep. That's, That's a word. Mind. That's a word. Yeah. Uh, as you were talking, when well, I was looking over here, because I had snuck in and typed in who invented, who came up with, who started Black History Month, and it was Carter G. Woodson. Yep, Carter um, G. Woodson. A black man who dedicated February um, to be Black History Month um, ever since 1976. Mark, every yeah. February since 1976. Black History Month. Um, he was a scholar who dedicated, he was dedicated to celebrating the historic contributions of Black people led to the establishment of Black History Month. So um, shout out to Carter G. Woodson. I think back in the day, that was probably, he probably wanted it to be that way. But, you know, back then it was a little different. So they probably boxed him in February and said, we're going to give you February, you know. Mm -hmm. Cause I well, doubt that he wanted it just to be one month. I think well, whatever day, whatever day black people invented something, that should be the day we celebrate it, not just one month cluster everything that people invented into one month. Spread right. it out. If somebody right. invented something in September, that's Black History Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just to your point, and just to just to clarify a little piece to that piece for everyone um, as well. So Black History Month actually started back in the late 1800s, excuse me. So, and it, and, um, and then it started off and then and, and, um, being officially known as being Negro Week. And oh. it was Negro History Week. And it was just a week long um, event that was in February, it was the second week of February. Wow. And during that time period, it was done at a lot of universities, um, HBCUs. So then it started to spread, right? And as it started to spread, then, during i think it was carter no it wasn't carter who was it 26 was it um it was in 26 there you go i should have to look it up to make sure i was saying this correctly so yeah um during um in 76 during abraham lincoln's and frederick douglas birthday week is when they decided to name it black history month and that was after president general ford utilized it as a um as a, a political piece 
right, in order uh, for uh, his campaign. And that's when we got Black History Month, when it became that piece. But we've been talking about Black history and wanting to do so for a very long time. And there's been prominent and, and great leaders out there that's been focusing on Black history and educating Black history for a very long time. But it just wasn't, um, I won't say nominated, but it just wasn't um, institutionalized, there you go, mm -hmm. until the 70s. And that's not, that's, that's like, that's like nowhere. And that's like yesterday. Okay. So, I mean, Negro history, we started in 26. We're almost a hundred years from that. So it, it, we just got to think about these type of things when, when we um, educate and really put things into perspective. The more, you know, right. See, I didn't know that part. I just dug up Carter and thinking black history started in 1976 and it didn't. So shout out to everybody's that's black that's continuing yeah. to make history we're not right. going to be labeled to it we're not going to be boxed into a week or month come on every day we are alive we are making history um shout out to michelle obama shout yeah. out to stacy abrams shout, everybody that's continuing to make history listen don't box it into february we're celebrating because it's a holiday and it's the february month yeah but just remember yeah. black history month is every day you're black that's right yeah. And don't don't forget Mama Oprah, but uh, but yeah, <laughs> hey, Auntie Oprah, let's go ahead and see what we got going on in that box, honey. All right, so um, like you guys, if you guys are new here, thank y'all for rocking with us. Um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below, hit the bell for, to, for notifications so you guys will know mm -hmm. when we're live, or if we're postponing, or if we're you know whatever. Make Lower sure you guys in the know. Okay, it's very important. I don't want y'all, um, those few friends of mine that's texting me to my son, what's going on in the show? If you hit the bell for notifications, you'll know when we're going live. Um, also, follow us on Facebook, because if we ever have to postpone the show, we're definitely going to go live on Facebook and let you guys know um, the, way, the, the whys and, and all that. So I'm digging in my own box, and I'm pulling out. A topic. I don't know. Let's see, this yeah. looks right. Yeah. Okay. This is right. We got Facebook. We got the Twister. We got the. Uh, I mean Twitter. Jesus. Sorry, I do that. It's the the love for We have <laughs> Facebook and Instagram. Oh. Okay, so. Oh. Okay. Let me help me out. Oh, yeah. I know. I'm back on the AOL CD, so I'm. I'm sorry. You got to get me together. But go ahead. What you got? AOL What's the CD. You know yeah, what? You don't put it in. You got so many minutes. That's this it. will pop up when this girl is not on here. What we got? What is that? What is that? <laughs> don't put it to the screen. Just read it. R. Kelly. Oh, Lord. Have mercy. I don't know what to say about R. Kelly. I, uh, oh, my okay. God. Okay. This, I think this is the wow. question that everybody wants to know, right? This is the question I think on everybody's mind. What's the question? Can we separate the person from the artistry? Our, can we still support R. Kelly's music, even though we don't support R. Kelly's actions as a person? Okay. That's the question I want to pose to you. I think that's the most common question. I feel like R. Kelly has um, made contributions to Black culture with his music. Mm -hmm. Definitely made a couple babies, uh, a few babies in the world from his music. Um, mm -hmm. the, the issue I have with R. Kelly and all of the allegations and things that he's, you know, behind bars about is that I now listen to his music differently. It's now that I can't hear it the same way I heard it back in the day. Only thing I can listen to R. Kelly that's, that's, that won't put me into the man of, who is he? It's Step in the Name of Love. That, that right there, and I believe I can fly. Everything else about move your body like a snake, my, and I don't see nothing wrong with a bump and grind and, and age ain't nothing but a number. It sends me because it's like, yeah. you were telling us all this before it happened. Yeah. And we were thinking it's for the grown folk. Yeah. It's for the little folk, you know? It's just, yeah. So I, if I'm not stepping in the name of love or believing I can fly, I can't mm -hmm. listen to his music and not, not have that thought. Have that, yeah, I can't. Yeah. I agree with that. You know, I, I am so glad you said it that way, because that just was like, you know, to me, because yeah. I think that is where the problem lies for me as well. And probably most people in our in our community is that 
because we know now know this, we our 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 perspective, our visual of him and his music has changed. Yeah. What is the music? Does it have a still a great rhythmic tone? Does it still sound good? Yes, but the music. feeling yes. is changed. Mm -hmm. My my thought on what that is has changed. It's not like I can listen to um, Nina Simone's um, "Feeling Good" and just feel great mm -hmm. about it, you know. But now if I listen to him, like you said, that bump and grind and "Age Ain't Nothing But a Number." I mean, uh, that was I mean, Aaliyah, but you know, just that whole thing together just really makes it difficult to really hold on to right right, right. you know it's, and i feel the same way i know this is he's not, he's not the person on this on the platform we're talking about which i'm R. kelly but i feel the same way about bill cosby i mean the cosby show you know when i look at his shows it's like god man why i why? cannot see bill cosby with the knee thing the knee dance he's oh, with the kids Yes, you know it's what I mean. Like, no, Bill, don't do right. that. Yeah, put them down. Don't do it. You know. So, I mean, it's it is it is difficult. It is extremely difficult, and that makes it easier, I think, to describe my feeling from what the the example you gave. So, thank you for those words because it's true. It's really true. How can I separate what I now know? When listening to his music, I can't. I can't put myself back in my '90s body um, and listen to how I listened to it then with right. that level of ignorance. Because now I'm not. I'm not ignorant on his actions. You can't. Un, you can't unhear. Unlearn, it. right? <laughs> like so you can't listen to that and not think about correct. He's been in jail and what he's in jail for. You know, mm -hmm. I don't see nothing wrong, but right. it is something wrong, Kelly. With my right. people, you know. If someone but says, that's um, not to discredit his music. That he made some good he music. A, uh, he is, is what, was a fabulous, fantastic brain uh, uh, artist. He is an Pied artist. Piper. He's the prime definition. I can't even say the Pied Piper. And it's so funny, too, because you know what the Pied Piper is, right? You know what a Pied Piper is, right? The history yeah. of a Pied Piper? What's the, the history, history of a Pied Piper was someone who used to play his pipe and have music and have little kids follow them follow him to the woods and they would kill him. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's the history of what the Pied Piper is. Mm. It's, it used to be the one I used to go through the town with his Piper, with his um flute, and he would play it and then kids would come out and follow him into the wood and then he would take them and I think he was either sacrifice them or kill them, eat them, something, something crazy he used to do to them. But oh. that that was the, the history of the Pied Piper. If I'm wrong, y'all please correct me down below in the comments. Arms, please look sure. that up. Look up the, um, the, the origin of the Pied Piper. And, you know what I mean? Because he would just tell us it. exactly what he was doing. You know, AJ ain't nothing but enough. Like you said, he collaborated that with Aaliyah because she was underage and I'm going to marry this little 16-year-old girl. And we was just like, is this true? No, they ain't together. You know, people would come up. But we didn't have coaching them at the same move your body oh. like a snake, ma. You like know what that. I mean? So it, it's um and it, now it, he's trapped in a cell closet. Trapped in the closet, even the trapped in the closet thing, you know, watching people and I'm hiding out because now you ain't hiding out from uh the boyfriend, you hiding out from daddy, okay, from the parents of who you hiding out from. I'm just saying, but sorry, Miss Coco. But uh, yeah, Miss uh, Coco would have <laughs> definitely chimed in by now and said, oh, um, yeah. "Excuse me, free yeah. Kelly, free Kells." Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so um, that was the the note from the box. I'm glad that's it's over. It. I'm glad she's not here. I'm glad <laughs> because this show would have been past the hour. Um, so far. Yeah. So um, let's see. Question of the day, you guys. Oh, you guys, please. In the comments, if your birthday is in March, please comment below with your birthday, um, the day, and you don't have to put the year, but just the day in March, and we'll give you a shout out for your birthday. Um, you know, somebody birthday you want to give us to give a shout out to them. It don't have to be your birthday; it could be your mom's, whatever. Put your birthdays in the comments below this, and we will definitely shout them out um, the first week of March, which is next Monday. Um, that's right. So the question of the day um, for the charms is what black wait a minute, no, not what black artist, I'm sorry. Question of the day, 
who do you feel is continuing to contribute to Black culture today? Who is who is continuing to to make positive impacts today? And the first thing that came to mind is I wanted to say um, I don't know. You know, the first thing that came to mind was Chance the Rapper. I'm trying to figure out why I said why I thought Chance the Rapper, but he was the he was the first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying Chance the Rapper because he was the first person I known that was independent as an artist and gave a, a million dollars to the Chicago public schools as an artist, giving back to the community. I think as, as a public figure to make that impact and not be signed to a label is not for, you know, what, what, Tonio? Speak to me. Talk. Why wouldn't that be something to highlight? I, I didn't say it wouldn't be nothing to highlight. I'm 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 listening. I'm giving you you have the floor. Don't mind. Don't make no sense. You know, at this stage in, I'm, in and our this, life, our face talk. I, my spirit, I, my spirit spoke to me, and it just said Chance the Rapper. Oh, okay, all right. I would have to counter Chance, and still, if I look about country, because I'm you know I'm from the shy, so I'm home in Britain. My shirt right now I say the shot only. I'm just saying it's just what we do all day, every day. Okay, don't matter where I'm at, I'm rapping. It's, it's what it is. Talk to me, talk to me. So you know, so I have to go with. For me, if I look at people, I would have to say Oprah. You know what I'm saying? She had her show in Chicago for for the duration of its its run, and she kept that money there in Chicago, and she gave to Chicago. She built, she did buildings, she did um, improvements to the city. She you know did a lot of great. Uh, um, contributions to Chicago itself, you know what I mean? And we had a lot of, a ton of people that actually did great work in Chicago. I mean, Shaka Khan, she from Shashai. She did a lot of great work. She's not an independent artist, but she still gave back to the community. Jennifer Hudson from Shashai. She still continues to do a lot of great things for the community as far as education system and donation and things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of people out there, even old and, and and this is controversial name as well. Old crazy old Kanye West. He still do a lot of things for the shy. You know what I'm saying? Especially early on in his career. But you know, there's a lot of people out there, and and I, nothing take anything away from Chance the Rapper. I just don't follow Chance the Rapper, so that's just me. But yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, anybody that get back to the shy, you okay in my book? I love it. Okay. To my to my defense, I've. I haven't heard anything about Oprah lately. I'm talk, talking about today, who's okay. continuing to. I haven't heard anything about Jennifer Hudson and, you know, who else your name? Uh, I know Shaka Khan. I've, I've seen an interview where she's back in the day. She done. I don't know what she's doing today, but I'm talking about far as recently. Mm -hmm. I know that was a highlight. It was on the news. It was publicized. Chance the Rapper gave them it. So that's that's okay. what I'm talking okay. about. Now, they probably yeah. give a donation behind the scenes and don't want to be highlighted about it, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I didn't know, you know, but thank you for educating me on that too, because that's what this show is about, right? Noting. We share. No. That's the we word. Share. No. Yes. Each one, teach one. Um, I'm, I've definitely received a lot of gems from Mr. Tonio. And. Um, <laughs> so I'm black and not proud. Hey. Hey, now. Hey. hey now. <laughs> I get let's not my forget fist about on. let's not forget about him, James Brown. Now that's right. Okay, he definitely uh, flew across wars to perform, and um, you know that's right. A lot of people don't know that. So James Brown was a huge activist, yeah. huge. Him, Aretha, huge activist. They were mm -hmm. on the center in front. Okay, yes. Marvin Gaye in front. Yes, okay? doing what's going their on? thing. Asking you know what I'm what's saying? Going on. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's it's amazing, and it's it's sad. I'm so sad. It is disheartening that we don't have that artists, prominent artists nowadays, that are doing the same, right? Using utilizing their platform in that way, like they used to. There's some, there's some, but we have too many black, black and brown artists out here that have their platform and they don't use it in that and for those political battles. Yeah, shout out to Greg McNeil who is changing mm -hmm. how we think about uh, music and life and things too. He's yeah. have a lot of gems in his music. Um, I think he was just coming out with a video for uh, Chess Moves. Uh, so mm -hmm. shout out to Greg McNeil and Reagan and their music group. 
for continuing to change how we feel about um, the black culture and change how we think. Um, Mindset Shifters is uh, the movement he has going on now. So um, okay. we hope to we'll get back on the show very soon, Mr. Greg McNeil. Um, oh, this is okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So, shout out! Shout out! Shout out to everyone who's 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 given um, homage to those before them and yeah. those that continue to um, shape the culture today. Um, and if, that's, y'all. if 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 there's nothing else, you guys yeah. remember that we always say: stay peaceful, stay positive, stay productive. And Antonio added, stay prayed up. Stay you know prayed up. We, these all peas. So, you know, peaceful, productive, and prayed up. You know what I mean? Hey. Definitely. Stay prayed <laughs> up, y'all. And ultimately, stay blessed. Blessed. Okay? Mm-hmm. See you guys next Monday. Um, make sure you guys are subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Share this, you guys. There's some gems in here that I even didn't know. So, just imagine how many more people didn't know about all of these things we talked about today. Chime yes, in. Love y'all. You don't have to be live for y'all to talk. Till then, we out. This is, this is a stat production, baby.